I'm just keeping it real, boo. So this week, kiddies, I'm getting back to business. This week, I'm giving you the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the awful truth. So help me God. I'm going to be telling you the awful truth about visiting Nassau, Bahamas. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with me, my name is Rogan, better known as this Bahamian gal. And I often muse about my time in the Bahamas. I was born and raised there, for those of you who don't know. And I love guiding people um, and just telling them tips and tricks about my country because I know a lot of you are visiting Nassau and other islands in the Bahamas for the first time and want to know what it's like. Um, I did a video a year, maybe almost two years ago, where I talked about the things you should know before packing up and moving to the Bahamas. And I still get questions to this day from that video. So, so many questions about people asking me about the different islands and particularly Nassau, which of course is the capital. If I can be honest with you, I, I enjoy reading uh, the online boards that talk about people's experience in my country. And I do so because I'm always interested to hear what people have to say, but also, um, I don't know, in some way I want to see how we can improve. And you hear some horrible things about Nassau on those boards. And to be honest with you, a lot of it is not untrue. A lot of it is quite, quite accurate. And I think it's always important for me to, yes, I like to shine a positive light on my country, but at the same time, I'm not oblivious to what's going on. I'm not oblivious to the fact that there are people who have pretty negative experiences. And I think it's only fair to address the elephant in the room. And so this week, I'm definitely gonna be telling you the awful truth about uh, visiting Nassau. Just so you're prepared before you go, you can decide whether you want to go. I think it's worth a good conversation. I know there are going to be people in my country who are going to be upset that I'm saying some of these things. Um, but at the end of the day, they, you know, they have to question, is she lying? You know, and the answer is going to be no. You know, people get butt hurt, but am I lying? That's the question. So just continue watching so I can tell you what you need to expect or what you should expect when you go to Nassau. So one of the things that I often hear or read rather on these uh, tourism boards or these trip advisor boards is that, you know, it's not really a lot to do in Nassau. You're going to kind of be bored. And I think I mentioned this in the video that I did a year or two ago. I can tell you there's just not a lot to do. And I think I said this in the last video uh, that I had. Um, a lot of tourists come on the cruise ships and they go to downtown Nassau, which is the core, um, which is the heart of the city, really. And, you know, the landscape looks the same. Bank, government building, perfume shop, jewelry shop, maybe a church, rinse and repeat. After you've been on a cruise, and I've been on a cruise before, every stop starts to look the same, right? They're offering almost the same things. The country that stands out is the one that offers something completely different or has activities that are completely different. There are things to do in Nassau, just not a lot, just not a lot. Once you get past the touristy things, it can get really boring very quickly. So you definitely have to keep that in mind. Customer service is not the best. Let's, let's just be real about it. Um, the Bahamas is really a tip industry. It's a tourist industry, but you know, there's a heavy tip culture. And I mentioned this in the last video as well. Um, and so there's an expectation for you to tip. And a lot of times you find yourself tipping on top of gratuity because gratuity is automatically included in your check when you go to a restaurant. Um, so if you're not getting great service, you're going to be really, really angry. You're going to be pissed off because it's not cheap to eat there. The food is expensive. You pay for gratuity. And then on top of that, people expect you to tip. Um, are there servers uh, in restaurants and, and different places that give excellent service? Of course there are. I've gone into restaurants that have amazing service and, and it's just a wonderful, beautiful thing. But that is not the norm. A lot of places you go and it also depends on where you go. Um, if you go more into the higher class establishments of course you're going to experience it you're going to have a different experience with people who really do want to go all out to service their customers but sometimes even when you go into the high class places it's it's kind of hit or miss because you'd be spending a bunch of money on food and the server doesn't engage it's just very um transactional you know you want your server especially when you're when you're tipping and, have, and paying gratuity you want them to be very engaging and just very sweet and asking you those kinds of questions and behaviors for the most part can be like that. 
um, they pour it on thick because of course they want to get a good tip but some people once they know that they have that gratuity included and they don't have to work for it they just don't care like and and it shows in the sloppy delivery of services um and that's not just in the restaurant business it could be in a bank it could be in a government building if i don't know for what reason you may have to go into a government building but you, you'll definitely see it um it's just an attitude and it's something that people talk about all the time not just tourists bahamians themselves don't like the poor customer service so that's definitely something you're gonna have to uh you're gonna experience i found that um customer service on the family islands is much different the people are much friendlier and um willing to go the extra mile um and they're just so happy to have people on their island especially if it's an island that um has been struggling they're very very grateful and they will go to the end of the earth to let you know that but we're talking about nassau and nassuvians can be very spoiled and uh yeah so just be prepared for that the customer service is not up to par a lot of times so now let's talk a little bit about the cost of being in nassau um, and i'm going to lump paradise island in this as well because a lot of people when they come to nassau they're they're staying over Paradise Island or they're staying in Cable Beach. It is a super expensive destination. And um, being in those areas, um, Paradise Island and Cable Beach can, I mean, you better just have a lot of money um, to take care of your, your expenses. Unless you're going over there and you're like, I'm going to Nassau, I'm going to stay at an Airbnb. Um, it, it's just costly. Even if you're staying at an Airbnb and you're going to the food store, you're going to have sticker shock because it's super expensive. I remember... Um, I mean, I've shopped so many times in Nassau, like when I go back home, but it, I, I kind of like, my mind is blown that I ever paid those prices because it's just crazy. Like $20 for contact lens solution. That's probably like this big. I'm not even kidding. When I could go into like a dollar store, dollar, dollar tree or whatever store and get it cheaper or go into Target and spend like seven, like $7 right now is expensive to me. I'm like $7 for contact lens solution, $10 for contact lens solution is too much. So imagine spending $20, sometimes $25 on contact lens solution. Um, when you're in the hotels, water can be $15 for a bottle of Fiji or something like that. That's a lot of money. So if you're going to go to Nassau and you're going to stay at the hotels, I'm sorry, but um, I'm looking out for you guys, you know, go to a, a food store and, and get you a bottle of water. Now, um, I'm not saying it's going to be like super cheap, but it's going to be cheaper than spending $15 for a bottle of water. That's just insane. So definitely give consideration to that and really try to eat locally. Um, you know, when I say locally, I mean like outside of the hotel realm, like because resorts hike up prices significantly. And plus, if you're going to be in Nassau, you want to have the full authentic experience. Um, and some hotels have been good at incorporating like um, the local restaurants, the local fare into um, their offerings. So that's good. But the price is going to be pretty high. So just be prepared for that. Um, whatever you were budgeting for your trip to Nassau, triple it minimum. People often talk about the world famous straw market. I don't know what made it world famous, um, but that's what they always say, the world famous straw market. I don't know that anyone in Tokyo knows about the straw market, but um, one of the things that I often hear from tourists is that the salespeople, the vendors in the straw market are extremely aggressive and pushy. Um, I wouldn't use the word aggressive to describe the vendors. That's not a word that comes to mind. Pushy, absolutely, absolutely. They're very pushy. They're relentless. There's so many vendors in the market and um, they're all in competition and they all want to make some money because they have to pay rent when they do pay rent at the straw market. <laughs> so, um, you know, the hustle is on. So you, you're going to get a lot of people, you know, shoving products in your face like, how about this? How about that? Um, it sounds fun, but it's really not. You get irritated every time you move an inch or you turn a corner. Somebody is offering you something. And even if you're buying from, from a vendor, somebody else will see it and they'll still try to sell, which I mean, that's the sales process. But if, if you just want to go in there and buy a souvenir, it's just too much. And, you know, vendors have been told this year for years on, on, on end and it, it doesn't change. Um, I don't like um, the harassment. I don't like pushy salespeople. So a way around that is really to go to a straw market 
uh, there are two things you can do. You can go to a straw market that's not downtown. So they have a straw market on Paradise Island, which is, is much smaller in scale, but still nice. I find that the ladies are nicer there, um, not as aggressive in my estimation. Also, you can go to the one in Cable Beach, which can, I feel like the people who are downtown are starting to go to the one Cable Beach. Um, uh, and so they, they got that pushy, that pushy nature as well. Um, I, I know they're trying to make their money, but it's just a lot to handle. And I think if any of you have ever been in the straw market, you probably are like, oh, geez, let me just get out of here because it's just too much. Um, what I love to do, to be honest with you, um, when I want to buy authentic, authentic Bahamian crafts, I don't, crafts or craft? Anyway, <laughs> handicraft. I don't really go to the straw market anymore. I mean, I, I go from time to time when I'm in Nassau, but my place to go um, is the craft cottage. Like I, I've spoken about this place so many times on my channel or my blog, because I really just love it. They have a no haggle policy and by them having, they don't harass you and you don't haggle them. So the price is the price. So if you want to barter, then you go to the straw market, right? But you're not, always getting authentic Bahamian products. Um, but when you go to Craft Cottage, this is not sponsored, I just love that place a lot. Um, you will get authentic Bahamian craft in a beautiful environment. It's very colorful and it's a nice little break away from downtown. Like it's not far, um, it's probably like 15 minute drive um, to this place. Um, but it's, it's just so much it's, it's much better. It's just, it's more serene and you don't have to be worrying about being harassed. So that would be my bit of advice if you're gonna to go to Nassau. Sure, go to the straw market for the experience, but if you find that it's just like too overwhelming, then definitely go to one of the other straw markets that I mentioned or Craft Cottage. That's my honest advice. Um, the fish fry. Yeah. A lot of people eat at the fish fry. It's a local hangout for, um, it's, it's called Arawaki. That's the proper name, but it's known as the fry. Like everybody say they go into the fry and it's a wonderful hangout spot for people who are on lunch or cause the beach is right nearby. Um, and some people in the evening, they want to go and have a nice cold Kalik, which is our bear. And they want a good fried fish or they want some conch. They will go to the fry. And the fry is great for that. There are places that I absolutely love. Um, like there's a restaurant called Drifters that I absolutely, I just love that place. I really love it. Um, but the thing that you're going to have to contend with when you're out at the fry, sometimes, especially if you're a female, is that sometimes you can have guys who are hanging around and they're not the most respectful. When I say they're not the most respectful, they can feel like they're just coming on to you. can feel like, oh, just like leave me alone. Let me just walk in peace. That's just the culture, right? You have to deal with that. But the thing that really um, bothers me about the fry is sometimes the smell. So when I say the smell, there's a lot of um, piles of discarded conch shells because conch is uh, one of the main um, dishes that you'll find at the fish fry. But a lot of the times when the restaurants are finished with the conchs, they just kind of throw them in the back and the smell because it's right by the beach, so the, 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 the breeze just brings that smell right in. It is just awful to me. Um, and when I'm eating, I do not want to smell that. Now, if you're inside the restaurant, you're not going to smell that. You're just not. But if you are sitting outside and you say you just want to catch like the sun or you want to catch the fresh breeze, know that that fresh breeze is going to be tainted by old discarded conch shells. Um, there have been calls to do better over the years, and I, I don't know if things have improved in the past few months, but that has been uh, a, a sore spot for me and for a lot of people, because I've heard people online say, I don't want to go out there. Just, it just, the smell is just not the best. Um, so that's something you're going to also have to contend with. Is it every part of the fry that you're going to smell it? No, but you might just end up at a restaurant where you do some, catch a, a, a stiff breeze and it's like, Ugh, I don't want to deal with it. So it's just something you have to prepare for. Now, that being said, I do go to the fry from time to time because like I said, I love um, going to like the restaurant Drifters, um, but I also love good Bahamian cuisine and you could definitely find a good selection out there. I mentioned that the straw vendors can be pushy, but they're not the only ones. There are people who are going to be um, really pushing up on you to ask if you want your hair braided. 
and <laughs> it's like a running joke when you just hear these ladies, you want your hair braided, baby? You know, and they, they put on these, these, I don't know if that's supposed to be like an American accent or what, but it's just, it sounds silly. Um, but you're going to have a lot of vendors, um, uh, uh, hair braiders, pardon me, um, pushing up on you, asking if you want your hair braided. Um, and who else? The taxi drivers, there's a system in place now. Um, but sometimes you can, it can get really, uh, boisterous amongst, uh, the taxi drivers, you know, especially if they feel like someone stole their sale. There are some really nice taxis that are modern and, uh, look really good and have air condition, which I think is, a that should be like mandatory in Nassau because the Bahamas is hot, hot as hell. Um, you may find yourself in a taxi. Uh, where the taxi driver crams way too many people inside of the taxi or um, he doesn't have air conditions. So I think one of the tips I would give is when somebody is, you know, there's a call system. So, you know, you just can't walk up to any taxi. Uh, but if you aren't comfortable and that taxi doesn't look good, it doesn't look safe or um, it, it looks like, you ask them if they have air condition. Like if they say no, then pass. Because you certainly don't want to be with a bunch of people inside this taxi and driving to wherever your destination is and you're doing so in the heat. It's just, you're going to thank me for that tip. Ask them, do you have air condition? Will you be putting on the air conditioning? Because he may have air conditioning or she may have air conditioning and be like, no, because gas is so expensive in Nassau. I, I've, <laughs> I have taxi drivers in my family, trust me. So I already know how it goes. So they, if they could get away with rolling down the window and that's it, that's what they're going to do. So just say you have air condition. Sure. Are you putting on the air condition? Uh, pass. One would think when you enter the country, particularly in Nassau, like you just have like, it's a wonderful experience touching down at LPIA. That's the Ninpiling International Airport. I'm gonna, let me tell you, it's, it's because the airport has been redeveloped. It's just a beautiful experience. It's a beautiful modern facility. I love that. I love that they have um, some junk canoers, um, at the airport who will be playing you know traditional drunken music when you when you come in it's so warm and welcoming and inviting and it's like the first thing you it's like oh it just gets you in the mood to be in nassau but here's the thing then you have to go through uh customs and immigration let me start with immigration um there are some really nice immigration workers who always have big smiles and they're like happy to engage and you know it's just it's just a pleasure like they're wonderful ambassadors for the country i've experienced those but I've also experienced people who are, look like they are just waiting for their paycheck. They hate their job and they are not, it's going to be transactional and it's not even going to be a good transaction um, when you're going through with immigration because I've, I've, I've come home like after like being over here for a while and all you meet is a scowl on someone's face or they're angry about something and you're trying to be nice and friendly to them and they just like open your passport. Take, take, your, take your passport on this, on this, on this case. Take, take the passport on this case. You know what I mean? It's, a, it's, a, it's like, who are you talking to? You know what I'm saying? Who are, you, who are you speaking to? This is how you speak to a visitor. So that's not everybody. Let me, let me, I will go to the edge of the earth and tell you I have had some, I mean, I've had um, immigration officers who will look through my passport and it, let's just say like I traveled to Nassau a lot around my birthday in August. And they'll be like, oh, you have a birthday coming up. Oh, man, you know, happy birthday in advance. And, you know, th that warm, friendly, inviting. Like, I love that. But every now and then you get your little skettle bum who pissed off. And, and you know, that's how they act when you come to the airport. Just try as much as you can to just kind of brush it off your shoulder, please. That's them. But be prepared. Um, when you're going through customs, a lot of people aren't aware of this. But sometimes the uh, customs agents will ask you to open your bag. I, this is for them to do, conduct a search and make sure you're not bringing any contraband into the country. Um, but more often than not, they just be like, you visitor or you a local visitor? And they let you just go right through, which I don't understand that. But anyway, this lets you go right through. So you, you, you may not get your bag searched. You might just get a, a pass to go on your way. Um, but just be prepared again for the attitudes. It all ties right into the customer service element. Just be prepared. Um, I want to talk about crime finally. There are many tourists who have reported feeling unsafe in Nassau. Um, you know, some of the women have reported being catcalled. That is a big thing. That's a 
there's a cultural thing in, in, in the Bahamas on the whole, but especially in Nassau, which is heavily populated, it's the most populated island. And catcalling in the Bahamas sounds a lot like, like men will do that to women. Um, some men are very disrespectful. They don't care that you're with your partner. They don't care that you're, you know, with your, with your husband, with, with your lady. They don't care that you're with your husband. Some of them don't even care if you are in a same sex relationship, they're going to try to convert you. So, you know, some, that, that sort of thing can be very irritating. It can be very frustrating. And for some women, it can feel, you know, unsafe. Um, tourists are not regularly attacked or anything like that in the Bahamas. I would never say that, but you know, you still have to have your wits about you. Um, and also know that crime does happen. I've said this before many times on this channel that yes, it's paradise, but the Bahamas is a real place in the real world. And you got good people, you have great people and you have bad people. So you have to be prepared for that. So, um, definitely don't be that person like, Oh, I'm in the Bahamas. It's not a big deal. I'll just go walking through this dark alley by myself. Mm -mm. So just be careful about that traveling groups. Um, and just avoid areas that, you know, are a little shady. Like when you get there and you're talking to your taxi driver as he's driving you around in his um, taxi, which probably won't have air condition, you know, ask them like, you know, like what are the nice areas to stay in and like are there any areas I should avoid? Um, and, you know, get, get you a real one too. Who's going to be straight up with you about what it's like to be in Nassau? Um, just so you could be really safe. Um, but for the most part, I think you're going to be okay. I'm not just saying that either. Um, I have to hasten. I hasten to say I do not work for any tourism board. I love my country. I love Nassau. I'm a Nassauvian. Um, and Nassau is one of the greatest cities that I've ever been in. And I do mean that even with its lack of great customer service, even with its lack of um, things to do, especially as a local, there's still so much. I feel so much love for that island. I don't work for the Ministry of Tourism, um, and so uh, and on this channel, I don't want to lie to you. And when I, when I say I don't work for the Ministry of Tourism, I mean, you know, sometimes people when they work for for a ministry, they feel compelled to just highlight the positive things um, about a country. But I think it's hard to avoid the fact that you know places have problems. Every place has some problems, and so it's just kind of stupid to avoid it, avoid talking about it. And I get questions all the time. And I'm like, you know, the time I take to, to respond to people individually, sometimes it's just easier to do a video because it's really going to be helpful to so many people. Um, this is not a video to discourage you from going to Nassau. I would never do that. I want you to go to Nassau. It's a wonderful experience. I think it's a once in a lifetime experience, but I also want you to be safe. I want you to be financially prepared and I want you to have an understanding of what you're stepping into um, um, once you go there. It's a laid back uh, vibe. Um, a laid back culture and that could probably probably be the thing that's contributing to you know the poor customer service in certain spheres um, but Nassau truly is a place that I, if I weren't even from there and I watched a video like this I would still want to go because the, I feel like the good is more overwhelming than the drawbacks I really do um, you'll make some lifelong friends there I think it's going to be one of those places that you continue to go back to I met a woman recently who said I must have been to Nassau probably 60 times I said not 60 times. She said, I have probably been to Nassau between Nassau and Exuma and Eleuthera 60 times. She said, I've been to the Bahamas about 60 times. And I thought that was pretty impressive. So shout out to her for giving my country some money. Um, so it must be something sweet in Nassau and Eleuthera and Exuma that keeps her coming back. But anyway, this was supposed to be an eight minute video. That was my intention in the beginning. And again, I just run my mouth too much. And so I don't even know how much, how long this video is going to be, but I hope it was helpful for you all. Um, please drop uh, comments down below. Give this video a big thumbs up. Um, let me know if um, you've experienced any of these things, especially if you've, you've traveled to the Bahamas and particularly, particularly Nassau. Um, let me know, you know, what your experience has been like. I, I love to hear the feedback. Like I say, I go on these boards and I, I kind of like scout, um, sift through to see what people are saying. And I mean, you just can't, it's things you just have to acknowledge. You know what I mean? I don't care how much you love your country. You have to acknowledge when someone is saying something that's unflattering, but truthful, you know, as long as it's the truth. I mean, I'm not going to run away from that. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. Thank you so much for watching. 
Don't forget thumbs up, subscribe to my channel. I'm growing every day. I'm so grateful, so thankful to each and every one of you. Share this video as well um, if you know somebody who is planning to travel to Nassau. And um, what else? Oh, follow me on Instagram at This Bahamian Gal and on Facebook at This Bahamian Gal as well. And of course, follow me on my blog, www.thisbahamiangal.com. I love you guys, and I will see you next week, Wednesday at 1 o'clock. Adios. Ciao. Thank you.